guys. I know this is kind of a wonky video for me. Background's not perfect. Everything's not perfectly cleaned and staged and the lighting's not the best, etc., etc. I can improve the lighting though. One second. <laughs> All right. That's a lot better. But I basically just wanted to do a spontaneous sit down video where I talk to you guys about just ignore the background, ignore the mess of it all, ignore the mess of it all, if you can. But I wanted to talk to you guys about my NaNoWriMo experience thus far. I am currently on, it is currently, whew, it is Tuesday, November 19th, and it is about 9.20 p.m. And as I talk to you, as I sit here now, I am at over 47,000 words. No, you did not hear wrong. I'm at over 47,000 words and we're nowhere close to the 30th. I mean, the 30th tech is technically next Saturday, but I will be completing NaNoWriMo over a week ahead of time, which has never happened to me before. I finished early before. But I think this is the earliest I've ever finished. And this is actually the most I've written in the shortest amount of time of any of the NaNoWriMo's that I've done. And I do think there is a reason for that and I wanted to discuss that. And I want to tell you guys why. So here we go. Okay, so for me to fully explain this to you guys, we have to go back. We have to go back in time. And NaNoWriMo for me, the first time around, came about in a time in my life where I was facing a lot of self-doubt. Self-doubt about myself as a storyteller, myself as a writer, and my ability to craft a novel that not only I would like, but that I would think that others would actually want to read. Um, I'd faced, you know, a ton of rejection. Um, I had a lot of fears, a lot of self-doubt, and to be quite frank, I didn't really believe in myself back then. I still don't think I really believe in myself now, but I really, really did not believe in myself back then at all. I didn't go to school for writing, so I've never been like formally taught or anything like that. I've taken writing classes, mostly playwriting classes, but that really fed into my feelings of inadequacy as a writer. And so that's where I was when I started my first NaNoWriMo. So I kind of needed this community and I needed this platform here on YouTube to be able to share and connect with other writers in order to not only build my self-esteem and self-confidence in my own abilities, but I also needed an accountability partner. And the internet was my accountability partner. And for me to be able to force myself, my first NaNoWriMo, I vlogged every single day. And I did that because I needed to be held accountable for my work. I needed to be held accountable for what was going on day to day to day. And that was kind of keeping me on track. That forced me to write every day because I had to vlog about what I was writing and my experience. And I couldn't do that if I wasn't writing. And I didn't want to just give up. I had had years of unfinished stories and me giving up halfway through stories, you know, and I'd only finished one novel and it got rejected. So I was really in a down place about my own writing and my ability to craft a fully complete story. So that's where I was the very first time I ever did NaNoWriMo and I desperately needed this platform. I needed you guys as an accountability partner to keep me on track and to make sure that I would actually finish the novel and complete it. And the irony is I did not finish my novel during NaNoWriMo, but I did go on to complete it. and. It's kind of like once I got into the groove of writing every day, I fell in love with the story and, you know, everything just took off from there. And that was my first NaNoWriMo. So what ended up happening is the NaNoWriMo subsequent to that experience, I kind of started to use this as a crutch in a way. The fact that I was sharing my experience with you all was keeping me accountable and I was depending on that like a lifeline. And so I continued to vlog and I've never vlogged every day since that first experience, but I have made NaNoWriMo vlogs 
every other NaNoWriMo that I've done and in a lot of my camp NaNoWriMo's as well. And that held me accountable to you all. Once again, my accountability partners. Hi guys, thank you for everything. And you know, it's like, okay, well I have to write because I need the content for my vlogs and I need to be held accountable and I need to share with them where I am and how things are going. And so that kept me on the right track with writing and finishing and accomplishing. And also I'm very competitive, I've realized. I've kind of low key known about that that about myself my whole life, but I am very competitive. And so I had to win, plain and simple. I have never actually finished a novel at 50,000 words, but I had to win. I think there's only one NaNoWriMo that I didn't win and it was a camp NaNoWriMo. And that was because I didn't even start. It's like I planned the project, I set my goal, and then I ended up not doing camp NaNoWriMo at all. And I think this was this past camp NaNoWriMo actually. That was the only one I didn't win. But I have won every other NaNoWriMo because I am very competitive and I'm that type of person where if I set a goal for myself and I really commit myself to something, I'm going to do it. That's one of the things that I really like about me. If, my, if I set my mind to something and I really commit to something, it's going to get done. And so now we come full circle to this NaNoWriMo and why I think I've written so much in such a short amount of time. And the biggest thing is for the first time this year, I took you guys out of the equation when it came to my writing. Since January, I have not shared anything about anything I've been writing this year. I haven't made any vlogs. I haven't really made any writing videos. I've been, I haven't really posted even on about it on Instagram. And for those that follow me on Instagram, you guys know I'm pretty active on that platform. And I've been very hush hush and very quiet about what I've been working on writing wise this entire year of 2019 and it has been a bumpy year for a year that I thought was going to be so creative it really wasn't and this was like my month you know the year was very tumultuous my mental health wasn't the best towards the first half of the year then when I finally got it together I'm facing so many challenges at my work and and that's where I spend the majority of my time so that has really affected my writing and just my emotions and so this was this was it like when I came to November I've been looking forward to this month all of year because I was like this NaNoWriMo is gonna be my time that's gonna be my time to write and so I've really been waiting and looking forward to this month and the fact that I haven't had to vlog oh my gosh you guys so normally how it would go is I would write, but then I would spend so much time vlogging and editing and I was still writing, but I was spending a lot of time and a lot of my energy was going to the vlogs and editing. But this time without the vlogging and without the editing, all of that energy is going straight to my writing. And so the times that I would have spent vlogging, talking about the story, updating you guys, talking to you guys, getting footage, making sure everything looks artistic, maybe taking shots more than once you know, for the editing, then actually editing, then actually uploading, then adding the music and all that stuff. All of those hours that I would have spent doing all of that, I have just put towards actually working on my story. And it has been life changing. I write usually between 5am and 7am daily, which I never knew I was going to become this type of writer because until until this year, I have always been a nighttime writer like late night, like around this time, 9, 10, 11, or a midday writer, right? Like around two or three, uh, especially the year where I worked part-time and I worked from home. I was strictly like a midday, like earliest I would write would be like nine, maybe, but usually like 10 a.m. or so. And getting this puppy here, come to the video, this little Tobe has turned me into a morning person because he wakes me up every morning at 5 a.m. because he has to go to the bathroom and he can't hold it because he's only six months old, et cetera, et cetera. So I became a morning person because of this one. And I was waking up super early in the morning to take him outside. And I just fell in love with that time of day. It's so quiet. It's so peaceful. You can really hear your thoughts. And there's something so refreshing about getting up at that time and getting to watch the sunrise and watch the day begin. And so once I bring him inside, especially on the days I have to go to work, I don't want to have to, and I walk Teddy too at the same time, for those that were wondering. I don't want to go back to sleep. So I, what do I do? I get out my laptop and I start working on my story. And the words just come pouring out. It is so amazing how 
crystal clear my thoughts are and I'm not coming home from a long day of work and then having to get the energy to focus on my story. It's first thing in the morning. I'm fresh. My thoughts are clear and nothing else has happened in my day yet besides walking these two. We're not playing that game. So I have all of the focus and the energy to put towards my story and I'm not wasting time vlogging about it or posting IG stories about it. I'm simply just doing it. So the silence part of it has really been powerful for me because it has helped me to hone. Okay, you gotta go. We ain't playing, you gotta go. Has helped me, no, no, no. Has helped me to hone everything and pour it into the story. And the words have just supported that and the words have just come pouring out. Especially on days where I don't have to go into work till 12. I literally have from about 5.30 a.m., 5.45 a.m. until about 11 to write. That's a lot of time. And I found that I'm just... It's been life-changing. I this is, this is it for me as a writer. I think this is going to be it. Um, and, you know, it's crazy that it's taken me years and to get to this routine and get into... I don't even know what to call it. My process. Oh, I feel like a real fancy artist, writer saying that. This is my process. Like, this is this is it. But yeah, so that's my reasoning for why I think I've done so well, so so quickly, this nano. It's surreal. Um, I'm actually about to get some food, hop on the bed, and, and get some more writing in. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to hit 50,000 words tonight, which is wild. Um, it is not even 10 o'clock yet and usually I write in the evenings for a couple hours so I'm pretty sure I mean I'm less than 3,000 words away from 50,000 words and I'm in a great place in the story right now so I'm gonna go work on my story yeah uh, sorry for this kind of impromptu video relax but I really like that vibe that was like that old YouTube and I kind of want to bring some old YouTube back to my channel. Like those very relaxed, not overly edited, overly stylized, and all the setup with the backgrounds. That's great too. But I really just remember those old days of YouTube where you really just talking to people on their bedroom floor. Like you didn't care about the background. You didn't care about the lighting. You just wanted to connect with the person and what they were saying and their personality especially with all the changes that have been going on with YouTube lately and this new Copra law, which a lot of creators, non-creators may be unaware of, but it's going to affect a lot of us. Um, I don't really think it's going to affect me that much because I'm not doing YouTube as a job. This is strictly a hobby. I make nowhere near enough from this to make it a job. But yeah, um, what else do we want to talk about? The scandal with Sarah Dessen? That was insane. Um, I mean, a few of my favorite booktubers have already made videos about it, so you can search that and go watch their videos. I believe Lauren from the novel Lush made a video about it, so um, hers was really great. It was very detailed. Mina also made a video about it, I believe. Um, I will put her channel name right here. Go check that out. But yeah, it's been intense. Uh... <laughs> And you guys know how much I love Sarah Dessen and her books. I grew up on her books. I've been watching her career since I was a child. She is kind of one of the OGs of young adult. And her books meant so, meant so much to me when I was a preteen in my early teenage years. That to see her behave in this manner was really disappointing. And to see some of, some of the women of color, some of the black authors, female authors that I really admire also kind of join her in her bullying and her nastiness online was also very discouraging and disappointing but what this has taught me i mean refer to my video book twitter is a trap and cancel culture but what this has taught me is just authors are people too and they make mistakes and they're subject to ego and pride and bullying and pettiness and viciousness you know they're people too and they have ugly sides to them as well and i think that's the downside of social media and you know authors not having publicists and not having media training and not having a team 
they are their raw authentic selves and sometimes that's not always going to be pleasant we're going to get the ugly side of things because we're all multifaceted and we all have different sides to us and people are going to act out of emotions and people are going to forget that you can just have a group chat and i'm just like why didn't sarah Dessen just send that instead of posting it on twitter why didn't she just send that article to her group chat which i'm sure she has for friends and then they could have responded all the things they were saying f that raggedy a bitch try not to curse <laughs> it's gonna be hard for me but F that rag the A, B, F that B, all that stuff is the kind of stuff that you kind of talk trash with your friends, your close friends in your, in your group chat. And you don't bring that to social media. You don't bring that to, a pub, to, the, to the public. I know that. And I don't really have the type of immense, huge platform and influence that she has. And the other ladies, Donnell Clayton and Tiffany D. Jackson and I'm forgetting, Siobhan Vivian. Like, I don't have the type of clout, platform, influence that they have. And I would never, you know, like, I have a group chat with my booktube friends and we keep things in the group chat and we get all of our emotions out there and keep it pushing. So I'm just like, Sarah, this was, this was supposed to be in your group chat, girl, but you put it on Twitter and now you look petty, you look like a bully, you look nasty. You look, you don't look good. And you didn't apologize. That apology was not genuine. It felt like your publishing house slash agent called you up and was like, you need to fix this right now. That's what that apology re reads like. It reads like a PR apology. And that poor girl that you dragged through the mud and that you sent all of your fans and your followers to completely just tear down and drive off the internet God knows what she's going through. I pray that she doesn't fall into some type of depression because of this. All of my thoughts, prayer, love, and positive energy go out to that girl because I can't even imagine what she's going through right now. <sighs> the good thing about the internet is there's always another scandal to take the heat off of the current scandal. Things do die down. But there are real people behind these accounts and behind these scandals. And people do get affected and emotions do come into play we're all human beings at the end of the day so i can only imagine what she's going through and i don't think that sarah Dessen is actually really sorry and if she is she, maybe she feels too much pride to to really show that you know maybe she's trying to put on this stoic facade in order to i don't know keep up some type of image i don't know girl if i was her i would have profusely apologized i would have made a video of myself apologizing showing genuine emotion and posted that on twitter and i would have sent that girl a sincere personal apology behind the scenes maybe she did who knows um the other authors that joined in the witch hunt donnell clayton so disappointed in you javon vivian so disappointed in you Tiffany D. Jackson, so disappointed in you. So disappointed in you, Tiffany. And they didn't really apologize either. And that's disheartening. And then they try... Uh, but that doesn't... I'm not canceling these women. I don't hate them. I'm not going to stop supporting their work. This is a disappointing moment, but it's a very human moment. And I feel like we can all learn from it. So... I, I mean, that's how I feel about it at the end of the day. I do feel that people, I shouldn't just say, well, yes, all people, but people who have, you know, a large amount of followers online, whether that be because they're published authors or online personalities or YouTubers or famous bloggers, y'all have to be very careful about the things that you say and what you post on your platform because you have immense power and you have, a, what did Uncle Ben say? We got to live by what Uncle Ben said to Peter. With great power comes great responsibility, okay? Period. Period. On period. Uncle Ben did not lie, okay? So we got to live by that. And it's not a lie. It's, it's so true. And you got to be humbled a little bit. Take your ego out of things, Sarah Dessen. Like, have several seats. And let your ego leave the room and let your logic come back <laughs> and just really think before you emotionally just put things online 
y'all twitter <laughs> twitter is a trap book twitter is a trap proceed proceed with caution do you guys remember that movie the princess bride one of my favorite movies of all time okay do you guys remember the scene where wesley and buttercup are going through the fire swamp that's how i feel about twitter book twitter especially has become very toxic it is the fire swamp of social media okay refer to the princess bride if you don't know what i'm talking about it's the fire swamp of social media beware you could just get sucked down into quicksand or quick mud or whatever the hell that was there could just be fires just gotta watch your step y'all out here wildin <laughs> it's just i'm making a joke out of it because if you don't laugh you're gonna cry and that situation was just really unfortunate i didn't want to make a whole video dedicated to it because i don't want to give it that energy a b other people have made way better more insightful videos with receipts and like the full breakdown for those of you who aren't really on book twitter and don't know what you're talking about i will link um, two videos down below that break things down amazingly well and will give you all the information. This is basically just me rambling about it because I just had to talk to somebody. And I can't talk to anyone in my real life because they don't understand what goes on in our book book community online. Everybody in my real life is like confused when I try to chat about it. So this is my this is my outlet, you know, and I know you guys will be able to talk with me and engage with me on these things. But yeah, just with great power comes great responsibility. What more can I say? That is how I'm going to end this video. <laughs> I will catch you guys in my next video. Mwah! Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. I hope everyone is doing well. Take care of yourself. The holiday season can be very rough for a lot of people, very dark. Take care of yourself. Love yourself. Take time for yourself. Pamper yourself. Self-care. And if you need to speak to somebody, Get the help that you need. Therapy is not something to be villainized or to feel awkward about. Get the help that you need. Therapy is amazing. Counseling is amazing. Reach out to the resources that you need to get the help that you need. Okay? All right. Bye, guys.